Welcome back, everybody, to a little less fear podcast. Today, I'm interviewing somebody all the way from Austria. Her name is Andrea Lukacs. Did I say that correct? Yes. Awesome. Great. And a little bit about Andrea. Uh, she deeply wants people to own their life, learn to set healthy boundaries based upon their needs and wants, and offers tools to overcome several troubles on way of letting go of the past to start living in peace, acceptance, and love. She learned how subconscious patterns run human lives and how they can be changed for the better so that they serve more, so that they're better serving in life. She would love to see everyone in their true potential happy and satisfied. And that's exactly what I would like to do as well. So welcome to a little less for your podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. So tell us about your journey. How did all this start and how did you become uh, known or how did you become more in depth with your own true potential? So um, as life was not always easy for me, so I started on the journey and uh, became an NLP trainer and hypnosis coach and a psychological counselor. Wow. Yes, and um, I struggled with um, healthy boundaries by my own, so until I was exhausted, um, uh, I was trying to fulfill other people's needs and um, I was not uh, taking too much care on myself. And it was a big lesson until I learned to set healthy boundaries, to take care of myself. And I saw that I'm even in a better place to help others when um, I, I practiced a, a little self-care for myself as well. When you started practicing self-care for yourself, what did that look like? So uh, in the first position, it uh, looked like uh, I set healthy boundaries. I asked myself before I um, reacted, I stopped and uh, f- just thought if, if I really want to do that, if that matches right now for me. And um, then I responded. It was not this automatically um, reacting with, yes, I can do that, but uh, holding in and asking myself the question if it is really okay for me now and if it matches and if I do want to do that right now. You know, what's really interesting uh, about this is there's no coincidence that we have connected because one of the biggest lessons that I've been learning this last year has been setting healthy boundaries. And it's really difficult, especially for people that are people pleasing and people that are used to fixing things and fixing people. And I've come to realize that a lot of it came from not having such a controlled environment growing up, uh, get some type of trauma and always knowing that if I could fix it, then I was in a way in control and it kind of made everything better and then make everybody else happy. But in the long term, I started realizing that fixing, constantly fixing things and trying to, and not having those boundaries with myself was not helping me grow as a person. It was actually keeping me stuck. And it was also keeping others stuck because by doing that, I wasn't allowing other people to practice boundaries as well. Did you find that to be happy? Yeah. With Yes, yes. And uh, I pictured for myself the picture that um, if I don't have any money, I can give any money to someone else. Right, and right, right, right. I, I use it as a metaphor. And so it is with our time and with our energy. So if I will uh, get broken in the long run, I cannot serve anyone around me. Exactly. And, uh, so I build up this picture in my mind. Uh, to remember myself that self-care and boundaries are very important and I don't have to feel guilty about it because I'm asking the right question at the right time and acting right. a proper to it. Where do those guilty feelings come from? Where do you think they come from? Because I also went through that where I, when I started practicing boundaries, there was like this, I'm doing something bad. Did you go, you, is, that what, is that what you went through too when you were having those guilty feelings? Yeah, but I think it's something uh, it uh, was told to us when we were uh, little children and our subconscious picked it up and said, okay. Um, But uh, to become aware of where this comes from, um, we can change it until we are not aware, we cannot change a pattern. 
but uh, always asking, um, uh, make a situation clear, asking uh, several questions on it. What, what are my thoughts? Uh, how do I feel? What do I want? What do I lose if I don't do this? And what do I gain? And to, to the greater the picture we have in front of us, the better we can decide. And uh, so we don't need to feel guilty because we had a great look on it. We uh, didn't go like um, some, uh, I don't know, passing through, but we did a con conscious decision because we had a great look on, on what was. I also find that um, boundaries tend to, I mean, once you actually start getting, setting up your boundary, well, actually, let me ask you this. What are some examples of boundaries? Oh, it can be uh, small as well. Uh, some friends are asking uh, someone if uh, uh, they want to sit together and play cards. And uh, sometimes it uh, does not match in the priority list of the day. So uh, we don't have to feel guilty or feel bad about it. But we can say, OK, today it's not possible, but uh, let's play card on this day. Is this OK for you or make some compromises? And so healthy boundary runs in every arena of our lives. Right. Yeah, what's also interesting is the fact that you're from Austria. And a lot of the times I thought that perhaps the boundaries that were overly crossed in my life or childhood was because of my culture being Latino. But I've realized that it's everywhere. It's not just my culture. Everyone's got issues with boundaries or speaking up for themselves. Just recently, I had lunch with a buddy and I wanted to have sushi and I didn't know he didn't like sushi. And um, we're eating sushi and he's he's a complete vegan, you know? And then later on, he tells me, well, it kind of made me sick. I'm like, well, that's an example of him not having his boundaries. And I feel that had he said, you know what? I'm not comfortable with sushi. I don't eat sushi. I'm just not gonna eat sushi. It probably would have been a lot easier for the both of us, but we kind of went through the whole him feeling sick and oh my goodness. And it just ends up, becoming turmoil when you don't speak up for yourself. Yes, but maybe we learned it at school to not speak out for ourselves, to please the teachers. And uh, um, right. I think there were some experiences in our past which taught us that way. But um, how great would it be if someone can speak out and you know, aha, he doesn't eat that, it's okay, it's no problem. We can make an, uh, another appointment or something different. But um, we face such a situation almost everywhere. And um, if we would speak out, uh, there would uh, a lot of problems disappear because um, yes. it will be clear what is. And we are often hiding it uh, because of fear of rejection, not being accepted. Right, right. I've also found that. Um bound people not having boundaries um i mean i i'm not sure if you're aware but i used to be a female i'm transgender and it was more difficult for me as a female to have boundaries as than it is now as a man and i feel that i don't know if it's a gender thing but i do think it's even more difficult for women um having boundaries because women i mean in the history of women they're supposed to be a little more like pleasing and they're supposed to be more like okay you know kind of just more submissive and I found that I had way less boundaries as a female than I am than I do now as a man. And um, I, I can see how difficult it is even navigating the world, and having been a female and having to stick up to your boundaries and say this this is what I want, this is who I am, and um, it's okay. Is that something that you you feel that you've gone through? Uh, so I'm not sure now how it is with uh, male, but uh, I believe it has to do something with the biography of uh, the person and what they learned when they grew up, how mm. they were conditioned, what was told to them, how, how they have to act or how that's they happened to act. And um, that's what's impacting us right. on a subconscious level. Definitely. And so what brought you to realize that you needed to work on your boundaries? What were some of the things that you were going through where it just, you just basically realized, you know what, I know what it is. I need to start setting healthy boundaries and this is what's going to make a big change. Uh, because it was exhausting. It was too much. 
<clears throat> and uh, I had a little energy, uh, had uh, um, my uh, desires and needs were not fulfilled and I was not happy. So I had no other choice than uh, setting them. Right. And when you say that you, that some things were overbearing and it was taking up your energy, was that because people were asking a lot of you? A yes, and it was even more and more and it became natural and uh, they expected it. It was not just a question if um, you would help out, but it was like a, a demand already. Oh, wow. And, yeah. So how do you feel now that you're able to set healthy boundaries? So I feel very happy. I I gained a lot of more energy. I uh, found my freedom back again. Um, I um, see my needs and uh, desires more fulfilled, and uh, my life quality changed, uh, in increased dramatically. How do you help people overcome the same thing that you've just overcome? So first of all, one has to become clear of, of their own wants and needs. And um, then just uh, practicing some clarity on uh, with asking several questions, making the situation very clear, and then uh, uh, learning to decide on- Andrea, what what's if somebody's not clear? Like, for example, just recently, I had, an, I had a situation just last week where I wasn't clear with something. I didn't know what I wanted. And it's very rare that I don't know what I want. And I had to give myself two days of silence and meditation for me to start having answers. But what do you tell people when they're like, I don't know what I want? Like, I've been so stuck on doing what other people want me to do that I don't know what I want for me. Oh, yes, I know that. So I will start with a very little, little steps in um, asking myself uh, on uh, um, either I do want to drink water or let's say a cup of lemonade and I will feel how would it feel if I was to drink this one and that one and then I take a decision and I try out and then I see okay um, I did a good decision it was fine for me and so we can do it with a lot of things in, uh, in our own uh, arena and then we can transform it into bigger and greater things. Uh, but we gain this feeling back of uh, what feels good and what does not feel good. And um, not just listening this, but also at the same moment asking questions, okay, on uh, how were my thoughts about in, uh, in this situation? How were I feeling? Uh, was there some need uh, which was, um, not fulfilled or what was the desire. And uh, so we can become more clear what was happening. And if we practice it on a daily basis by asking several questions and reflecting on situations, uh, we will become more clarity. And so when you're helping these people become a little more clear, are you doing this verbally or are they writing this down? Do they have homework assignments? Do, is it in a group work? Do people talk about it together? How does it work? Uh, so in a conversation, we work it out and as a homework, it could be uh, if, if, if there is a lack of ability to <clears throat> become more clear and they want to practice it, they can practice it by writing it down. And oftentimes we don't, don't uh, have clarity because we have thousand thoughts in our mind. Oh, yeah. And uh, if this is the case, I would recommend, okay, uh, practicing self-care, let's say, in nature and being present there, concentrating upon the voices we can hear or the yeah. smells or, or whatever. And if then a thought comes up, just picking up a mobile phone, speaking a voice or a notice so we can be sure that we don't forget it. But sure, sure, and right. then uh, if we know we have the security, we will not forget it because we will have a look on later. Right. then we can put that thought away and become present again. And by practicing being present, uh, these all necessary thoughts, we can uh, more lightly direct in a direction we want them to go. So they are not controlling and running like crazy in our mind. I love how you said that uh, to um, connect with nature. 
I used to do a lot of meditation in my bedroom, but lately I've been going to a park and I feel that like sitting on the grass and actually feeling the grounding energy and in the heat, or even if it's cold, it just makes a world of a difference in being in your bedroom. Like you have to go outside. Yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, also by observing the sensations and uh, uh, you will feel the wind, which you don't have in the room, for example. Yeah. There will be some smells. Uh, yes. Different, you can, uh, can observe. Definitely. And the energy from, from the grass. Uh, so feeling it, uh, how it enters into the body or which sensations come up, uh, you can observe which feeling is where in the body. So it's uh, a lot of uh, different ways uh, we can connect with our body back again. And that makes sense because once you actually ground yourself and connect back with your body, then you're easily able to figure out what's good for you what's going to help you, your own healthy boundaries. And when you let go of those stresses and other people's words that are coming in, then you're able to really kind of realign yourself with your true purpose. Yeah. And when this inner voice is come, so we can also ask ourselves, is this my, my thinking or is it something Someone else? I yeah. was told? Yeah. Right. Right. And that's, I find that to be one of the most challenging things with people. And that was one of the most challenging things with me at first as well. And once I, um, I, I was able to figure out um, my own thoughts, then I was able to trust my own intuition. Yes, you become more sure about yourself uh, with practice. So how does this um, compare to like a higher self or a higher purpose? Or is this all the same thing to you? A higher self uh, is for me like the over subconscious where we are connected uh, all together. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and the purpose, um, um, everyone has a purpose and I believe it's uh, this one which is uh, filling us up, which uh, makes us happy. Uh, yeah, doing this what we love is uh, is um, um, the description of the purpose. I will see it that way. Doing what you love. Mm -hmm. What feels the best for you and brings you the most joy. Yes. What brings you the most joy? So I love working with people and seeing them uh, growing. Do you work with kids as well, or teenagers, or is it adults? adults mostly yes and how does this uh do you incorporate meditation because i also feel that meditation could easily be incorporated into the way that you see things in the way you can find your true potential happiness so uh, meditation um uh, as a hypnotherapist i use hypnosis which is um, similar but different. So I believe that uh, we can quieten the mind in that way um, very easily. Since you've been uh, a hypnotherapist, how does that compare with self-hypnosis? Because I was like, I've seen that some people can do self-hypnosis. Is there a difference between self-hypnosis and actually having a facilitator do the hypnosis to the individual? Hmm. Um. It's, it's um, getting in a certain trance state and we can do it by ourselves as well. If we learned it, um, how, how to indu induce a hypnosis. <coughs> but I, for myself, love a real hypnosis more because then I can let go and just following the guide. How long have you been doing hypnotherapy? Uh, since one year approximately oh wow so it's kind of new to you yes and how's it going so far so I love it because it gives me the uh, the re relaxation time I need and I can quieten my mind and uh, relax when you my body but are you doing hypno uh, hypnosis with people as well or you're just the one getting hypnotized no, I can use it as well. So 
sometimes it's necessary to find out the um, patterns in the subconscious if uh, yeah. someone cannot remember. So we help uh, with techniques to find uh, the root cause out so oh, we can wow. change it. And when the root is changed, so it, everything or a lot of things become easier with. Oh yeah, for sure. It's one. like untangling a memory almost, right? Yeah, yeah. And what about uh, like past life? When, when you're doing hypnosis, do you go into any type of past life regressions? No, I'm not practicing this. Not practicing that. So it's basically just going in on the things that people are most struggling with. Yes, to help them um, um, solve their pro problem in the present life. And what about issues like uh, addictions or habits, bad habits and stuff like, or relationship issues? Yes, bad habits. Uh, we, um, uh, when we found them out by reflecting where it is, and uh, we have a goal on where we want to be, we can have a look on uh, which resources are lacking or what is blocking more me or stopping me from this new or desired behavior and we can exchange it more easily Could you but i'm us? a love yeah yes go ahead so I, I i love it in a practical way so by uh, creating some experiences um, in life. So step-by-step step and a lot of reference experiences because if we have a lot of them, we can generalize it in different arenas of our lives and transform it. And step-by-step, and, uh, step we gain security and we can go faster if we slow down a little bit. Could you tell our listeners a story of a successful uh, hypnosis that you did? Yes, there were some pain issues and uh, in five minutes we just erased them and um, what? So, uh, shoulders wow. which could not be moved for some years, it disappeared within five minutes. So we both, so not just the client, but I as well were very surprised of how great this can work what uh, wow that's amazing so what i mean was this like a pain that they had for years for a long time yeah yeah wow and it's no medication helped and they uh, asked me so could you help and i said I, I i don't know if, if it will work but let's try it and and we were both very very um surprised on how quick uh, it can disappear out of a body and was that one of the first times where you were actually able to see the power of hypnosis? Yes, it was amazing. So sometimes I'm speechless of the power yeah, of our mind. Yeah. I would be speechless too. What's yeah. another story? That's amazing. So uh, also uh, this uh, old stuff with... Uh, um, show hypnosis and how people can forget, let's say, uh, a certain number and uh, you let them count from one to ten and tell them that they, for example, forget the number four and, and they um, uh, start to um, count one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight nine ten so it's it's a simple technique but uh, i also was uh, so surprised on how this works right when i yeah. thought this the first time in my life that's amazing and what about helping people or i don't know if you've had the opportunity to uh help with help people that have had like strokes or you know, any type of memory loss or Alzheimer's, are you able to bring back some type of memory through hypnosis? Does that work at all? Uh, so um, in real, we, our mind does not forget anything. So um, yeah. if we forget something, then yeah. it's a, a security issue. It, our mind is going to protect us from something. Yes. And uh, almost there were, were a painful memory behind it. And it's uh, just protecting us. It's not uh, erasing some memories, but protecting us from feeling the pain again. Well, that makes sense. Yes, because uh, our mind, uh, if it has to choose uh, 
survival or pleasure, it will always choose survival for first and then pleasure. Right, the reptilian brain comes in yes. and remembers yeah. the instincts. Yes. That's yeah. really interesting. Wow, Andrea Lukacs, everybody from Austria. How can our viewers, our listeners, and our watchers find you? If I can be of assistance for your listeners, they can contact me via email at the moment. Uh, will, it will be the best uh, way. So it will be andrealukac.coaching at gmail.com. Excellent. And are you on any social media? Are you on Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok? Yes, I'm on Instagram and Facebook. They can find me with Andrea Lukac. And I'm going to find you and follow you right after this. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea Lukac, thank you so much for being live from Wow Austria. This has been this has been an honor. Thank you so much for sharing your light, your love, your potential, your energy. Like you're definitely an angel. You're beautiful. Keep going. Keep helping people. It's gonna light you up and it's gonna light up the world. Thanks so much for being on a little less for your podcast. Yes, thank you for inviting me and being with me. Absolutely, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you too.